Hey everybody. Okay, so this video is going to be about the taming of the shrew. I know. Fantastic. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can. Um, please remember that my renditions of these are not always, I don't know, covering every single detail. I try to cover the important details. That doesn't mean that there are, you know, less or more important ones that I forget, but sometimes as I recall these, um, I do leave a few things out. So just keep that in mind that you should have read it. If you haven't finished it yet, fine, you know, finish reading it before your quiz, whatever you have a quiz on Friday. It opens at midnight on Thursday, closes at midnight on Friday. You also have a short essay due on this. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, all right, so let's get started. So there's a lot of people, okay, in this play. Now, again, I know I've said it in a previous email. If you've seen the movie, The 10 Things I Hate About You, then you know the play, which is great because they fairly, they keep the um, plot and character names pretty similar. So anyway, we're going to move on. So Baptista is one of the first people that we're introduced to. He is the father of Katharina and Bianca. Okay, so... In the movie, if you ever watched it, if you watched the one on Amazon, um, Baptiste is fairly, you know, plump. Um, I don't know why that's important, but I think it's an important thing to say. Because um, if we remember being heavy set uh, shows that you're wealthy back then. So whatever. Um, so all he wants to do really is marry off both of his daughters. Um, however, he knows that people are vying for Bianca and so he refuses to let Bianca marry until someone takes Katharina and it becomes apparent that Katharina is basically the problem child. And that's why he, he has this, like, no one can have Bianca until Katharina is taken care of. Um, so anyway, then you have Katharina, she's kind of the wild child. She, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain her. She's, um, you know, she's very strong-minded. She's very stubborn. She, she wants what she wants when she wants it, essentially. Bianca is a little more airheaded, I hate to say. Um, but she's, you know, she's into love for love. Whereas Katharina really doesn't want to be with anybody. She wants to be independent. But that's not normal for the time period that this play is set in. So anyway, then we have Hortensio, who really loves Bianca. Okay, I mean, mo most of the people want Bianca and love her, okay? Then there's Lucentio, who's an out-of-towner, who thinks that, like, Bianca is just the bee's knees, <laughs> okay? We have Tranio, who works for Lucentio. Then we have Vincentio, who is Lucentio's dad. And then, of course, we have Petruchio, okay? Petruchio is, ouch. Um, he's kind of like this random friend of, I believe, Lucentio's, if I can remember correctly and comes to town to wed Katharina so that everyone else has a chance at Bianca. Fun, right? Selling our daughters away. Anyway, I digress. So we then enter into the introduction of Taming of the Shrew. And this is where things kind of get a little um, wonky, I guess, for people when reading this play, because it's a play within a play. Okay, so what happens is in the beginning is that this guy, Christopher Sly, is so trashed that his friends decide to play a joke on him. They dress him up, and when he comes to, they tell him that he's this hot shot, big shot, okay? And they're going to put on a play called The Taming of the Shrew. So it's really these other people putting this play on for somebody else, and that we're reading this play as a play, okay? Well, yeah, it gets a little hairy. Um, but it doesn't, it comes back a few times, but not really anything significant. To be honest, I don't think that there's a need for it. I think it's just supposed to set the tone as a comedy for Shakespeare, less of actually having anything to do with the storyline. Um, okay, sorry, I digress. Okay, so in the opening scenes, we have, um, Bianca, Baptista, and Katharina at their house. And there's kind of a fight between Bianca and what's her face, uh, Katharina. 
happening and Baptiste is like oh my god not again because he can't stand it but they're always fighting and it's usually that Bianca wants to date people wants to get married and why you know why can't you be normal why can't you want to get married I don't want to be a shrew for the rest of my life okay so this kind of sets us up for that idea that Bianca is not allowed to wed until Katharina does okay so at this point, we have somebody who kind of sees them, Lucentio, and he has this grand idea that since nobody knows him, he is going to swap clothes with Tranio, okay? He essentially is like a servant and let him be the new kid in town so that Lucentio can dress as a squire. Come on, Dottie, move. Sorry. Um, and offer his services as a tutor to Bianca, a music tutor, a Latin tutor, whichever, okay? So Petruchio is, you know, now in town because then we get introduced in a few areas. Okay, so Petruchio shows up. He's looking for a rich girl to marry because he's a little, I don't know, gold diggerish. <laughs> and his friend Hortensio, sorry, I, I said earlier, I said Luzengio, it's Hortensio, says that he can help. He'll dress up like a real cool cat to give Bianca music lessons, okay? So Lucentio is going to be a private tutor and Hortensio is going to be a music teacher, okay? So Katharina ties up Bianca at one point and she's like, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Why do you want one of my boyfriends? Um, or do you want one of my boyfriends? And Katharina's kind of like, no, I don't want any of them. Like, they don't even like you. Like, they don't love you. They love you for your looks because you're pretty, but that's it. So dad has to break up that fight. It's a good time. Um, uh, where the hell am I? So then Petruchio shows up at Baptista's house. Okay, he asks about his daughter, Katharina. She's like, oh, isn't her name's Kate, right? Or something, you know, he shortens it, which is kind of rude. It's kind of an insult back then. Um, people didn't really have nicknames. It was, you know, like nicknames are something that we do now. It's much more modern, but it was not something that was done back then, okay? So William Shakespeare would always be referred to as William then instead of like Will or Shakespeare or Willie or some, I don't know, very a bill. Okay, so Petruchio says to Baptista that he's going to marry her and she's kind of like, uh, <laughs> are you sure? Sure about that? Like you haven't met her? And he was like, it's fine. It'll take me like 10 minutes to woo her. So he goes in to meet her. He, you know, he says, hey, you're going to marry me. And she's like, absolutely not. She says her famous line of, if I be waspish, you best beware my sting. And he really likes that she's very witty and she's very quick to um, come back at him with some insults. So he really enjoys the banter between the two. And he, he equally enjoys her sarcasm, her snippiness, you know, all of the things that most people hate about her he kind of gets a kick out of, he gets a little bit of a rise out of it, if you know what I mean. So he walks back up to Baptista and says, hey, you know what, she agreed that, yeah, she's gonna marry me. And Baptista's like, oh my God, I could drop dead from happiness. Okay, so they make a deal, the wedding's on. Petruchio has this plan that whatever Katharina says, he's going to act like it's the opposite. If she yells, he's going to compliment her soft voice. If she clams up, he'll compliment her terrific chit chat. You know, it, there's a lot of, there's all this fighting between the two of them afterwards because then he says, ha ha, I have arranged it. We are getting married. And she's like, yo, go F off. Um, and he's like, no. So anyway, <coughs> she does hit him at one point. Um, it's, <laughs> it's pretty comical. She throws things, she hits him. Uh, she tries to hit him with a chair. I mean, honestly, love at first sight, guys, right? So then we switch gears kind of over to Bianca. Her teachers, Lucentio and Hortensio, hold class together. Uh, she prefers to study with Lucentio. So she doesn't really care for the music teacher. Okay, now if we remember, Lucentio is currently dressed as Tranio. So there is that. That's where things get a little confusing. I don't really know why um, Shakespeare likes to do this stuff you know, this cross-dressing, because <laughs> this is not the only play he does this. He does it mostly in comedies, but anyway, I digress. So then we move on to the wedding day of Kate and 
um, Petruchio. Okay. It's a big day, but he shows up late. Now she is, I don't want to say pissed, but she is a little concerned. Okay. So I think the concern comes from the fact that she for so long thought that she wasn't good enough because of her sister being more, you know, more beautiful than her, um, that she's afraid that she's being stood up. Okay. So he, she's a little afraid that she's going to be left at the altar. And then all of a sudden you hear Petruchio coming down the street on his horse and he is dressed in the oddest of garments. Okay. Completely mismatched, completely, you know, one leg is fairly, you know, one pant leg, I should say, is fairly tight. The other looks more of a pantaloon, which is like MC Hammer pants, if you want to think about it. He has very colorful, bright, festive, non-wedding colors on. Okay, so she's just like, oh my God. The wedding goes really fast. Petruchio hits the priest and kisses Kate, like they're, as if they were already alone. She's kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I don't know you like that. <laughs> It's weird, right? Um, and he says, we must go. So they go, you know, at first they go to eat. They go to their reception, what would be a modern day reception. And within 10 minutes, Petruchio says, we can't stay. We got to go. And she puts up, you know, she kind of stands up to him and says, absolutely not. We are not leaving. Like, I'm going to enjoy my dinner. And he said, it's fine. Then I'll just kill this person and this person. It's fine. Either, you know, like it's either that or you're coming with me. And she's like, oh, oh, I'll go with you. So they leave. Okay. By the time they get to Petruchio's place, they are both pretty exhausted. More, more so Kate. Kate's, Catherine is pretty exhausted. Um, if you watch the film with Elizabeth Taylor, this is a pretty good scene just because, you know, she falls off her horse a few times. Um, actually, I believe she's given a donkey instead of a horse. Uh, um, she falls off the horse. It's pouring rain. She's drenched. By the time they get to Petruchio's castle, it's actually snowing. So, you know, she is just, she is done. <laughs> she's hungry. She's tired. She's cold. So she wants to eat something. So Petruchio has his staff make some food. And all of a sudden, you know, the food comes out at the table and Petruchio looks at it and says, oh my gosh, none of this is good enough. Throw it all away. So she's literally about to bite into like whatever they're having, chicken, turkey, something. Um, and he says, you can't eat that. It's burnt. My cook burned it. How dare he? You know, you're my wife. You're not supposed to be eating burnt food. He makes it this big deal. Okay. And he get, you know, he gets all mad. So he throws all of the food away. And Kate was like, it looked fine to me. So she's like ready to cry because she's just, she's just so upset that she's so hungry. She's so tired. She's so cold so much. Now at this point, we're getting this feeling that we, as the readers are getting the feeling that Petruchio is doing all of this on purpose. There is no, um, he doesn't have to be doing these things, but there's a reason behind it. So, okay. So after the food fiasco, they say, Let, you know what, it's time for bed. Petruchio says, okay. But he doesn't like the way that her bed looks and throws it all around so there's no place for her to lie down. At this point, we have a monologue, which is an aside to us, that Petruchio's plan is to kill her with kindness in order to tame her tongue. Okay, so he is now going to try to be, you know, he's trying to beat her at her own game, essentially. So he's going to wear her down by not letting her sleep, not letting her eat, okay? And then he's gonna to start to change the script up a little bit, all right? Um, oops, sorry, got my notes. So we kind of go back to Baptista's house, okay? Because Bianca is now not married yet, but she is now free to marry because Katharina is married, okay? So Bianca, and Lucentio are 100% in love. Remember, Lucentio is uh, looking more like Tranio and he is the tutor. But the secret, Hortensio throws in the towel and says, well, screw this. If she's, you know, she's into him, I better move on. So he marries some other older widow woman um, who's rich and nuts about him. So, I mean, honestly, it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, back at Petruchio's house, 
Kate is still hungry. Petruchio gives her some food, but not until she thanks him for it. Okay. He also got her a new outfit. He had his tailor come make her an outfit and she is just, lo she loves it. She's saying, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. This is great. And he says, I absolutely hate it. Back it goes, tear it to shreds. And as Katharina leaves because she's so upset, he ends up paying the tailor because this was part of his killer with kindness plan that, you know, we're going to humble her. Okay. So he says, we can wear our old clothes to visit the family. It'll be fine. Let's leave. Um, you know, it's only seven o'clock. And she was like, but it's nearly two. So it seems they aren't going anywhere until Petruchio is also in charge of the sun and the moon and all the time. So at this point now, they are going to get on their horses, get on their donkeys, whatever, and go back to Padua where Baptista and uh, Bianca live. Okay, because now it's time for their wedding, Bianca's wedding. So <sighs> it's a good time. Okay. On this ride, something happens. Okay. Not something bad, but something interesting. Kate's mind starts to change. Okay. So Petruchio starts to call out obvious untruths. Okay. So he's looking at the sun and goes, ah, tis the moon. And she says, no, it's the sun. And he says, the moon, the sun, the moon, the sun. Fine. Ah, yes, it is the moon. So Kate, you know, changes what she says to accommodate what he's saying. But then he goes, no, I think it's the sun. She said, well, then it is the sun. Okay. So now we kind of, we start to see this, this bit of brainwashing or lack of a better term happening. Okay. She is starting to pick up on the fact that she should probably just play along. Okay. So on their way, to Padua, they run into an old man, okay? And they say, he says, you know, like, you're such a pretty girl. And Kate knows just what to say, a living doll. Naturally, this confuses the old man because he's just like, what is happening? But really, she's just trying to play along to Petruchio, okay? So this man's name is Vincentio, and he is on his way to Padua to visit his son, Lucentio. Interesting. I know um sorry the real one not the fake one okay so the fake lucentio tranio is still following orders pretending to be the boss he's hired to an old man to pretend to be vincentio do we see a potential problem here i think so okay there's a huge fight before everybody finds out who is who and that bianca and the real lucentio got married in secret this is a big deal because this kind of shit doesn't happen back then but anyway whatever who can be mad at people getting married <laughs> Honestly, Baptiste is just happy that, you know, uh, they're both married, they're out of the house and he gets to have an empty nest. Good for him. So there's a huge party to celebrate all three marriages. So Kate and Petruchio's, Lucentio and Bianca, and then Hortensio and his old lady. All right. So at this particular feast, party, whatever, the men... Lucentio, Hortensio, and Petruchio make a bet as to whose woman is going to come when called. Now, they all think, well, Hortensio and Lucentio 100% full-heartedly believe that Kate has not been tamed as Petruchio has been claiming, okay? So they're like, well, obviously it's not going to be her. It will be my wife. So they each say it's going to be their own wife. So they each call their servants and ask them to go get their respectable wives okay so hortensio says go get whatever her name is i can't remember and he the servant comes back and goes she will not come she will not come so then lucentio goes bianca will come i'm sure of it so he sends his servant to go get bianca bianca doesn't come so now petruchio says go get go get katharina and so Katharina comes and everybody's shocked that she listened, that she took an order and she listened. And now at this point is Kate's big speech, which is where you as a reader get to interpret, is she truly brainwashed? Was she truly tamed or is she faking it? 
We don't know. Okay, it's really left open to interpretation. But she has this huge speech where she is like, you need to be a servant to your husband. You need to wash his feet, kiss his feet. You need to do what he says when he says it. You need all of, you know, all of these things that she truly never believed in is what she's telling the other two women to do. She's telling them that you are not good wives. And to be a good wife means to be subservient to your husband. And so she gives this very long speech and Petruchio says, oh, kiss me, Kate. And so they kiss and it's like a real kiss and not the marriage kiss. So you're left to really ponder, does she love him now or does she not? Is this all a game? Is she faking it? We don't know. So it's totally up to your interpretation. But um, anyway, it's a, I think it's a, it's a fairly fun story. Um, if you've seen 10 Things I Hate About You, then you know that she does actually have feelings for him. Um, if you want to go off of that interpretation, but otherwise, whatever. Um, that's really it. That's all I got. Um, I know that I've missed some other vital points, but remember, I read these things so often that I just kind of, at this point, pick up just the, the uh, important storyline, important plot facts, I guess. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this rendition. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys later. Have a good rest of your week. Bye, guys.